So I've now kind of set myself probably the hardest job. As a VMware guy, I'm now going to talk about VMware after the VMware CTO has just spoken about VMware. So luckily, I kind of raised this with Joe, and uh, he has willing to step in on a few slides if I, if I do require him. But I want to make sure that we're starting to pull the time back as well. So we've just heard about the software defined data center being one of these key components to help you move forward, to help you deliver that simplicity, that flexibility, that mobility of your workload. And near enough, everybody in this room probably has at least one of those components. Otherwise, you probably would have looked at today's agenda and thought virtualization isn't the thing for me. And that is vSphere. That is the compute thing, uh, element that has been... I don't think there's many technologies we can see where literally everybody looks at something and goes, we've all got to go and do that. You might look at things like Office 365. That is having quite wide adoption. But again, there's still quite a varied opinion. It isn't obvious that everyone's just going to go to that one platform. We're then seeing VMware form this um, software-defined uh, operating system of the data center that is looking to leverage the benefits of virtualization in many more areas than just simply compute. Certainly in storage, in network, and then having a set of tools that allows us to simply and easily manage it. The whole idea is we want to kind of extrapolate all of the things that matter to your applications from the underlying hardware. We got that when it came to virtual machines. How long did it take us to kind of recover a server or build a new server? It took a long time, and that's why virtual machines really took off. And now if I go in and say, actually, I need to move two of your VMs to the cloud. Can I just go and click the button and do it? You'll go, oh, but wait a minute. Look at the SAN. There's a data protection policy, and it needs to be able to do this. And I have a load balancer, and the network is configured in such a way. So actually, are you as flexible as you need to be? Probably not until you can get to a place where all of that is kind of wrapped up in one bundle so it can move from A to Z. VMware have a very, very mature vision in this space. vSphere, you all know about, and we are going to reflect upon it. vSphere 6.5, one key message from VMworld is 6.5 is kind of the standard you need for the software-defined data center. It's been out a year now, and we're going to come into that a little bit more. vSAN 6.6, .6, again, is a mature offering. And I'm not going to touch much on NSX, because I've got a fantastic speaker talking to you about that after a break later. This all comes together into uh, VMware uh, Cloud Foundation. And Joe mentioned this, so I'm not really going to go into it in too much detail, where effectively we've got the compute, the storage, and the network, but we have the ability to have a fantastic management of platform around it. And the idea is that it is almost able to self-maintain. It's looking at itself. It's able to upgrade itself. You want to add a new host. It looks at that, and it adds a new host into your infrastructure. It is the ability to kind of offer that cloud simplicity but wherever it works for you, whether that is in the private cloud or the public cloud. We haven't mentioned VMware on AWS, but that is utilizing the technologies here to make sure that the technology in your data center will be the same when you want to move your virtual machine to a VMware platform in AWS or another one of VMware's partners like iLand or someone like that. vSAN is now a mature offering when it comes to storage. We're seeing exponential growth, and this is quite an old slide. So in half one of 2017, there were 7,000-plus 7, customers starting to utilize vSAN. I would say probably 8 out of 10 designs that my team are doing at the moment are all focused on a vSAN-based technology, and there's a number of options that we'll come to in a moment. vSAN is now enterprise-ready. You have choice. You can either do it in a hybrid mode where you've got flash, and then you have spinning disk with flash offering the caching layer and spinning disk offering the capacity. You can go full, fully flash design where you would then be able to take benefit of things like deduplication and encryption and compression. So you can get mass consolidation ratios when it comes to the, the data. So it's now enterprise grade. We're getting fantastic performance. I used to spend so long talking to customers about how many inputs, outputs per second they need on their uh, SAN. And we used to have to look at their workloads. We still do this, because it does tell a story. But with Flash now, with technologies like vSAN, the question shouldn't be, am I able to get just enough to do what I need to do today with a little bit of overhead? It's, OK, you're using 3,500 3 IOPS. You've got 20,000, so let's stop talking about that. Let's concentrate on something else. It's another way that you can deliver that flexibility and that simplicity into your business. 
There's free ways that you can look at vSAN. You can look at a bring your own design. This might be you already have some uh, servers in your infrastructure that you bought in the last couple of years, but you want to start moving down a vSAN route. So look at the VMware HCL, look at the controllers you're going to need, look at the uh, flash, look at the spinning disks, and start upgrading those servers to deliver you vSAN with the correct licensing from VMware. The one that I'm seeing most often at the moment is the vSAN ReadyNode program. And that means you go to people like Dell EMC that we partner with, look at their 14G servers, where you're able to get more capacity in them than ever before, more RAM in them than ever before. We've got the latest generation of Intel CPUs. But they're fully validated building blocks. Dell EMC have worked with VMware, and they've validated every single component that is going to come in that server you're going to buy. I've got a demonstration of how to enable v, um, vSAN. I think it takes about three minutes end to end if you do it slowly. Compare that to how long it would take you to install the most simple SAN, maybe an hour, two hours, or something like that. It really is simple and easy. And then you want to add a bit more storage, you simply can add it in. Or even it can auto detect and add more storage in if you do it in a certain way. So the building blocks are a favored way. Effectively, it just means you're going to get hardware that you know works, and it still has to be installed. You still need to put your vSphere on it. You still need to upgrade it. It is just that base platform. Or the growing trend we are seeing are these hyper-converged appliances. And VxRail by Dell EMC um, is, is the platform that we choose um, to talk to our cust about, customers about. It's based on that vSAN technology. I like vSAN because it comes in the hypervisor. Those of you that have already got vSphere in your environments, you get the license, you put a tick in it, and it's installed. You already have it. You can already trust it. It's already part of the code that you're running. It's easy. VxRail leverages that technology. But what it also is able to do is they've been able to look at the wide um, uh, software set that was bought in by EMC, and they're able to e make it easier than ever before to replicate your virtual machines from one place to another place, to ensure with VN uh, vSphere data protection that you have a fully validated backup, to make sure that actually, if you want to start leveraging the cloud and tearing some of your data off to the cloud, you are able to do that. So it is all about that flexibility wrapped up with ease of management, ease of support, one throat to choke, and that's why we are seeing such a growth, certainly, in the vSAN ready nodes and the VX rails. And for me, it's just all about understanding your specific use cases. If you're an organization that you have two vSphere hosts in Essentials Plus, you don't touch it from one year to the next, do I recommend you go out there and buy a VX rail? Probably not. There's probably a more affordable solution for you. If you're a dynamic business that's growing, that needs to focus on something else, that has multiple sites, VxRail could be a really attractive package for you. So as I've mentioned, vSphere 6.5 came out last November. I think it actually was finally released on the day of the last Define Tomorrow, on purpose, of course. There was a number of releases, but effectively, the architecture was simplified to allow ease of management with things like the virtual center appliance now being the go-to um, for configuration, which means it's easier to update. Update Manager was included within that. We had improvements with availability with uh, vCenter HA. We had encryption, so we've got VM encryption, secure boot, secure, boot, secure boot, and audit quality logging. But more often than not, if one of the sessions we went to at VMworld, it's all about making sure that you've got the latest, most stable platform that will leverage you to do something else. There's a great presentation. I hope it was recorded somewhere. And it was all about comparing vSphere to the plumbing in your house. And if you wanted to do something, you could have that lead, pl lead plumbing that was still there from 100 years ago. But then you want to go and add a dishwasher. Well, it's going to be a bit difficult to do that. But then if you upgrade that to more modern plastic plumbing that allows you more flexibility, I don't know, I'm getting a bit lost here. But it allows you that flexibility to do what's next, whether that is NSX, whether that is starting to bridge into AWS, whether that is starting to automate it. Update 1 has now also been released as well. So I fully recommend that everybody looks. You've probably already got the software uh, support and subscription, so you're already paying for it. Get your virtual infrastructures upgraded to vSphere 6.5, update 1. Computer World have a service that is wrapped around this. We recognize that it is maybe not the top priority for people to keep on top of their virtual infrastructure in turn of upgrades. The benefit is it just works, and you don't need to log into it day after day, and your focus is on something else. 
So we've launched a service called CW Care Maintain, where we are able to create a um, customized maintenance schedule for you, where our engineers will come in, we'll make sure that your virtual infrastructure gets upgraded by one full upgrade at least once a year, and minor upgrades then two, three times a year, as well as doing a couple of health checks to make sure it's smooth running, how can it be optimized, how can you get more out of it. Um, we're also going to give you some free training to make sure you're getting uh, the most out of it. So what we wanted to do is just make it easy for you guys to make sure your vSphere was that solid foundation so you could cope on everything else. Put it in such a way that it was an easy for you. So if your business prefers kind of the monthly payment cycle, we can do it with that. If you want to pay it up front in two or three years, we can do that. And then hopefully it's a tick that you can put in a box that you know your virtual environment is upgraded so you can concentrate on something else.